Hey, what's up guys? A lot of you have been asking me on Instagram to do a little editing breakdown or to do a little thought process, a little video about how I do things, how I approach photography and how I edit my photos. So after a couple of weeks now, I finally got the time to do a YouTube video about it. And you voted on Instagram which photo I should edit. And it's my, it's one of my favorite photos from New York City from the famous Dumbo spot with the Manhattan Bridge in the background. To give you a little, a little information, a little background knowledge about the photo, it was taken in June 2022 at around 5.30 in the morning. It was like the first day in New York City, the first full day I, I arrived the day before. Couldn't really sleep because of jet lag, so I decided to go for a sunrise mission and went to Chinatown, walked across the Manhattan Bridge and then ended up in Dumbo at the photo spot. Luckily there was no one around and I, am, I was the only person there, so I had the whole location for myself. And it was, it was amazing and it was pretty fun because normally the place during the day is pretty crowded and you basically have no chance to get a clear, clear shot of the Manhattan Bridge with no one in there. And a lot of people ask me as well to give you, as I said, to give you a little rundown of my creative thought process. So my photos are known for distinctive colors, powerful, strong colors, and the gloomy, dreamy look to it. And you've been asking me, what's my secret sauce, how I do that? And the answer is pretty simple. That's the secret sauce. It's called a black trauma filter and you attach it on your lens and the filter has the effect that it makes the light all soft and bloomy and dreamy and you get those, you get basically the dreamy look in your images and that's something which is really difficult to make in Photoshop or in, or in Lightroom and that's why I'm using the filter and that's the the whole secret behind my my technique on how to get those dreamy and bloomy look in the photos and with that let's cut to future Michael who's going to edit the photo from the famous demo spot in New York City thanks past Michael I would like to kick things off with a little technical background knowledge about the photograph itself. The photo was taken with my Sony Alpha 7 R3 camera and the Sony F1.4 35mm Prime G Master lens. The image itself is taken at ISO 100 at 35mm with an aperture of f1.4 and a shutter speed of 1 to 2 thousandths of a second. Here you can see the unedited raw image and in comparison the edited JPEG. Instead of doing a full edit all over again, I decided to give you a quick rundown of the edit and my thought process behind it. I would like to kick things off with my tone curve. So basically I use the same tone curve for like 90% of my images, 95% of my images and do some slight adjustments in the highlights, lights, darks and shadows. And that's all I do and that's like most of the, most of the times how I kick things off while editing a new image. After the tone curve I'll go to basic adjustments. For picture profile, I'll use Adobe Standard and the white balance as shot, so I can adjust it afterwards if I needed to do a white balance adjustment. In that case, I turned up the exposure, lowered the contrast, and pretty drastically lowered the highlights to minus 100 and the shadows to plus 100. Most of my images as well, I always like to reduce the highlights and reduce the whites and play around with the shadows a bit more. In that case, I decided to turn it up to plus 100 because I would like to 
have the buildings on the left and on the right popping off and uh, sticking out as well. I also decided to to turn up the blacks to plus 45 and that's my basic tone adjustments there. For the presence I to enhance the effect I get with the use of a black promise filter I love to reduce clarity to minus 10, minus 15, even minus 20 in that case and lower the texture a little bit and dehaze it as well like turn the haze to minus five, minus 10, in that case, minus five as well. For vibrance and saturation, as you may know from my Instagram or from my Twitter, I love using those popping colors, those saturated colors. And in that case, I turn vibrance and saturation all the way up to the 40s and 50s, in this case to plus 55 and plus 38. This is like, normally I keep them around plus 10, plus five, and play more in the HLS and the color adjustments itself. But in that case, I turn them all the way up into the 40s and 50s. For the HLS and HLS and color, I, in that case, I turned the red even more into some reddish, the orange more into red and the, or the yellow into more orange colors. And I lowered the saturation of all of it because I increased it in the basic adjustments in vibrance and saturation. I also lowered the luminance of red pretty much because I my main goal when editing the image was to get some sort of tunnel vision to lead the viewer towards the Manhattan Bridge in the background because it's the main subject of the photo and that's why I decided to to darken the buildings on the left and on the right to get that some sort of leading lines towards the bridge itself. I also I also brighten up the orange and the yellows just to get more in more depth in the image to brighten up the trees in the background as well as the sun shining through from from the light from from the left from the right side to the left side in terms of color grading i decided to add some yellow some orange into the midtone shadows and highlights just to enhance the colors you get during a sunset i as well turned the global color added a orange look to it just to add on to that sun sun sunrise tones i would like to bring out for the details i keep it basic i keep it pretty basic sometimes i sharpening the image a bit more or if i have a higher iso i do some noise reduction but in that case nothing was needed there same goes for lens correction i most of the times I almost, most of the times I enable profile correction and every time I have removed chroma, chromatic aberration on. on. Uh, for the transformation, I decided to scale into the photo a little bit just to have more compression to it. Because 35 millimeter is a pretty wide angle lens and I wanted to have more compression so I decided to scale in the photo a bit. For the vignette, I for a lot of my photos, I use a vignette, pretty simple, pretty light, not a strong vignette, but just to, just to have some sort of darkening around the edges to lead the viewer towards the main subject in the middle of the photo. That's why I love using a vignette in most of my images. For the color calibration, I decided to turn the shadows more into purple to add some purple to the shadows. For for red primary, green primary, and blue primary, it's most of the time it's the same. I love 
turning the red primary into orange and the green primary in more of a greenish turquoise color and the blue primary more into a turquoise as well. That's what I love doing in most of my images to achieve the look I like and the look I love in all of my images to have some sort of the same ca color calibration in all of my images. I also decided to turn down the saturation in the greens and the blues just to have those reddish buildings stick out more and to reduce the 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 blue in the sky because I'm not a big fan of those blue skies, blue bright skies. I want them to to be more subtle in the image. For some filters, I decided to add a linear gradient just to darken the street and the cars a bit to highlight the bridge more and to not distract the view from the bridge. And I also decided to add a sky adjustment to select the sky just to just to add just to brighten up the sky add a little bit more contrast and reduce the clarity for a bit those are just minor adjustments i'll do just to finish up the photograph after i'm done editing in lightroom i always go into photoshop to do some minor color grading adjustments and maybe remove some distractions for example those leaves there or maybe the bird there those are just some minor adjustments i'll do after after the basic color grading the, the main color grading in lightroom and i don't want to get into that in this video because it would take up so much time to to do a photoshop rundown as well but basically my whole editing is done like 90 90 90 percent in, in lightroom and then maybe 10 percent in photoshop afterwards but i don't want to go into that right now and that's maybe something for a future video and with that i hope you liked the video it's like my first video i ever did so <laughs> don't be too harsh on me and Leave a thumbs up, maybe drop, maybe drop a subscription, and um, hope hope you could could take away something from my little rundown on how I approach photography and how I do my Lightroom post production after I took the photo. So thanks for sticking by and have a pleasant day, my friends.